All right, it is 11.28 p.m. And this is my 2013 Mustang GT Premium. But anyway, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you should already know that. But this is gonna be a rotors and brake install. Pretty simple, not gonna lie. It's kind of the same concept from 2011 to 2014. V6 or GT, I've been seeing a lot of V6 videos on it, but the GT, I can't really find one, so I figured I'd make my own. And I'm gonna just get into what you're probably gonna need. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it's gonna save you so much time. I've already done the left side to uh, kind of refresh my memory on everything so I could tell you guys how to do it. But this is what you're gonna need. You know, this is the part number and everything. I picked it up at O'Reilly's. I don't see why you wouldn't try to go find one of these because these companies nowadays, like O'Reilly's, AutoZone, they do the whole rental system where you pay for it. And then if you bring it back in two days, they just give you money right back. It's basically like a loaner set, but it's free as long as you bring it back in the first, you know, two days. And this is only going to take, you know, like an hour or so. So this probably will be kind of a long video. I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. Because I you know when I was trying to find videos on this in the past, I was like, I just want every little thing they go through. I don't want anything cut out. If they have a hard time, you know, getting a bolt or something, a nut, I want to see that, you know. So I'm going to be showing all that. Hopefully that won't be a problem. But anyway, you're going to need a 15 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter socket. I definitely recommend getting a pretty large ratchet. You're probably gonna need it. I definitely needed it on that side. It was pretty rough getting two of the nuts out, but we ended up doing it. Anyway, let's go ahead and take the wheel off, right? So I'm telling y'all, there's not gonna be many cuts in this video. I'm just gonna, gonna be raw, hanging out with y'all a bit. And I'm looking for <laughs> the breaker bar because I knew that's where I had this all go, here it is. There we go. All right. Now, if you don't have an impact, which thankfully I do, you're gonna need to leave the wheel on the ground first, so you know, so you can break the, nugget, the lug nuts loose. But you guys already know that, right? Put these in a safe spot. Another good thing about recording is you never really lose stuff like this. Cause you go back in the footage, you're like, oh, where'd I put those lug nuts out? And here they are. Okay, let's go take the wheel off. You know, let's just move this. Move this out the way. Have a nice little walkway type deal going on. Make sure everything's still recording. Yep. Nice. Nice. These uh Nitto NT triple fives, they've been holding up really well. I've actually gotten over 30,000 miles out of these. Now, do they hook up really well? No, definitely not. Um, but they look good, you know. 255, so I mean, what do you expect? But anyway, we'll just leave this here. All right, now on to the fun stuff. Let's get all the sockets. All right, so one quick thing I do recommend doing, I've done it on the past few times I've done brakes and I've noticed a slight difference. So if you come over here and you pop your hood up, let's see. You can release a little bit of pressure by just unscrewing this and, you know, taking the pressure off of it. So when you go to compress your, you know, calipers, it'll be a lot easier. I don't know if that's super true or not. I've always done it, so I'm going to keep doing it. It's not really a big deal. But anyways, let me go ahead and grab the sockets over here. And this is going to be the hardest part. This is pretty much the hardest part of this whole process. 
Hopefully I can see in there. But basically, before I do it, look. This is the bolt you're gonna take off here, and then there's one right here. Those are gonna be 13 millimeters, and then after that, we're gonna come back with the 15 millimeter and take this bolt off, and there's a bolt behind the caliper, but it's right there. Now, like I said, on the other one, on the other side, this was a pain, but we'll see how bad this one is. Do the bottom first. Oh yeah. It's as bad as I thought it'd be. <laughs> Oh man. Basically you just want to contort your body every which way possible to get this undone. And that was the ticket right there. I think. I hope. <laughs> oh yeah. And see these, once they're broken loose, like just that one break and they're they're good. I got that one. And this one we kind of need the extension. Okay. Oh yeah, come on. There it is. Tell you, don't be afraid of these things, man. It's, I probably could use a little PV blaster or something, you know, to make it easier, but it is what it is. Like I said, after that first long push that's what she said it just comes right out you know All right. now we have to we can go ahead and wiggle this out actually I um, may need a screwdriver to do this sometimes it's fine you can just kind of wiggle it I wiggled out the last one so this one should pop out Actually, before I pop this out, I'm gonna grab a little piece of wire or a bungee cord, whatever you have, and we're gonna hook it up to this so there's no significant amount of pressure on the brake lines because that would be bad. So let me grab a little, little stringy string, wire type deal. Man, it is so humid tonight. I tell you what, I'm sweating. But let me grab this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I already got the other side done earlier. <laughs> Alright, that looks pretty good. So now you want to take the 15 millimeter 
and these are just as bad to get out mind you this car has like 128,000 miles and hasn't gotten brake jobs done probably as it should in the past with other owners and stuff you know but that's all right you know, sometimes you're just worried about going fast and not stopping you know all right let's just go to the left and try to get this one first let me get the smaller smaller socket here we only have the 15 in the big one i think i only have the 15 in the big one actually same stuff sometimes you got to stand up and um i mean try not to strip it obviously but <sighs> get it with that backhand watch this <sighs> ah, is that bad i'm not even gonna lie Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Gather yourselves, folks. Cause this is this is coming undone. I mean, I'm not going inside anytime soon. I can tell you that. All right. I went and got a little bit smaller. I mean, it's obviously still a 15 millimeter, but it's a little closer to me, so I think I could get a little better leverage. Oh, uh, don't think I'm just gonna skip to me getting it off. That's not gonna happen. We're gonna. We're gonna do this together, all right? I'll tell you what, it's going to get done one way or the other. Maybe, maybe we'll try to do this this bottom one first if this caliper doesn't get in the way too much. Let's see. This is all together, okay? Put her in there. See if we can't get her done. <laughs> Oh, I feel it. I think I got it. I got one of them, at least. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, every other video you watch, you're going to be like, just, oh, yeah, take these two bolts off. Slap on the brake pads. You're done in 20 minutes. Nah, it's always some crap, you know? I'm not going to skip it, though. You know, we got it off together, it's all right. And so, yeah, these also wanted to mention, they take a long time to get out. They're pretty deep. I mean, this basically holds your whole brake assembly on your rotor. So don't get me wrong, it's really important. I was, and also, <laughs> do not do this with your new pads. Like, don't touch all over them. Obviously, I don't care, because these are getting replaced. Do not do that with the new ones. <laughs> you will not be able to stop. That's kind of don't want to cover swing around dance over here. It's a very long bolt. And it's, it's hard to hold on. It's a not necessarily hard to hold on, but like other one just break loose and screws out, so it takes a little while. Get that bad boy. Set that right there. Now we still have the top to do, unfortunately. So we have our front brake pad. Yeah, those are pretty thin. I ain't gonna lie. That is pretty thin. Backs are not as as bad. So you, the orientation wise, you know these are the backs because you have your kind of warning indicator here. This will start squealing when your brake pads are like almost completely gone. So if your brakes are squealing, definitely, definitely, definitely get your brake pads checked out. Be pretty dangerous. But back to this one. I'm gonna try to get this one off. Once we get this one off, I mean the job's basically done. I mean. I told you, this is the hardest part, right here. I'm gonna show you how to use this little tool thing, which I learned how to use pretty recently. It's pretty cool. Oh, I think I feel it. Yes. Oh yeah. We got it. 
You know why like gyms and cars go together? Like gym content and car content kind of go together? It's because you gotta go to the gym to work on this kind of crap. I promise. I mean, unless you just got a lot of money, you know? And then you just buy nice tools. Nice electric like impacts and cool stuff. And you don't really have to worry about it that much. <laughs> but, you know, it's all part of it, it's fun. Okay, let's screw this one. No. Oh. And we'll slide this off. Kind of remember the orientation of your little plates, that is important. I'm gonna be reusing these. Um, I re reused them on the other side, so I'll keep it the same. And they're, they're fine, I mean, I, I looked them over, you know. My new, my new kit does come with new ones. Um, sometimes the new ones, there's kind of some tolerance issues. They won't fit perfect, making it really hard for the brake pads to uh, sit in there. But uh, I'm gonna just use the old ones. You know, obviously, if you have new ones and your old ones are bad, then replace them. But mine are fine. Also, this is something if you want to do the pins, they just pop right out of here, and you can re-lube them. A lot of people recommend doing that. I'm not gonna be doing that today for my own reasons, but. Uh, if you want to, you definitely can. All right. Now the next thing is to get the pads and, let me go ahead and take this off for one. This might be the other thing, you might have a hard time taking this off. If so, just get your little sledgehammer, like a little rubber one or something, and just ding each side and it should come out. So the tool that comes in that kit right there is right here. And I've already got it kind of set up because I used it earlier. But you want to take, I don't know if they're all the same letter wise, but I used F. I don't know why that one's there. Hold on. E. All right. So I used F and you, let me show you how it kind of comes. So you take it out, put this over the handle. This is like the backstop. So you could put some pressure on the piston and you slide this on like that. And this is gonna slide into somewhere on the piston, I'll show you in a second. And you basically screw it this way and it pushes the piston closed. And then once the piston is closed, it'll stay closed and you have room to put it over your pads. And while you have this off, you could definitely wire brush this a little bit, you know, clean it up if you need to. It's no big deal. Uh, getting the position for this is a little difficult. Um, one other thing. Uh, I like to use a little, you call me a baby or whatever for using a glove, I don't really care. <laughs> but this little bar digs into your hand, you gotta twist it quite a few times. So this just makes it so much easier to deal with. Okay, let's see, you see the piston there? It's, it's pretty far out, I'll be honest. So we're gonna have to deal with that. So you wanna come here, you wanna match up the two little knobs or whatever there to your piston and put the back plate on here in the back and line it up. The back plate needs to go in. I'm gonna go inside of your caliper if I can get it. Yeah, screw that aside. This thing's a little weird, but when it works, it's, it's really nice. So then you want to Screw this until you feel it's really tightened up on the back plate. There we go. So you want to screw this to the left and it's backing this into this back caliper and it's tightening it. And then make sure that's really tight, make sure your little knobs are in there and then you're going to want to start cranking it down. It's going to push the piston in. It's definitely not easy, but I think it's better than using like a C-clamp. In my opinion.
take this out, take this to the right, and she'll come right out. And yeah, it's pretty flat, so that's perfect. Now you're, you're done with this tool. Go ahead and bring it back to your O'Reilly's, AutoZone, whatever. Get your money back, free tool. Okay, so you're gonna take your rotor out the bag here. And you're gonna see, now if you have like some, I don't know, I guess some rotors don't come coated with this, but most do, let's say majority come coated with this kind of anti-rust deal. Whoa. <laughs> Almost dropped it, all right. So they usually, most of them come with this anti-rust coating on it and you just get some brake cleaner which thankfully this kit came with some it's pretty nice of them and you just want to wipe it off i'm gonna grab a paper towel as well just in case we can't get it all off with just brake cleaner come outside get away from your car's paint to do this Take it out of the bag. And you just, there's really, you can't hurt it, you know, if you're just using actual brake cleaner. You can spray it all over the place. You definitely don't want any of that residue on your wheels. I like to give it like one little paper towel rub there to get all that off and just be careful with your fingerprints. But before I do seal everything back up with the tire and wheel, I like to spray it again with some brake cleaner. So it's not the end of that, but now we could definitely go throw it on the car. Boom, perfect. Find the holes here. So it's gonna line up just like that. Rest that there. These are the big bolts, what am I doing? Here we go. Fifteen millimeter bolts, get those started good. All right, go ahead and tighten these up as well. You just want to make sure these are really snug. I'm sure there's exact, you know, foot pounds and all that from factory you could look up. Um, but just make sure they're really tight. I mean, that's pretty important. These bolts here. Obviously, you've seen how hard it was to get them off. Now you want to go ahead and grab them pads, the new ones. Take these old ones out the way. Got that. This kit was from Amazon, uh, Detroit Axle. You know, I just kind of saw good reviews on it, went with it. Really no thought process, like why that brand or anything. I don't really have anything good or bad to say about them. But I'll let you know, maybe in a month or two, if they're horrible or if they're great. <laughs> but let's go ahead and put these on. So the one with your squealer is what it's called, I guess you could say, or your warning mark is always in the back because this one's gonna wear out faster most likely than the other pad because this is the one that directly that your piston is pushing on. Um, one thing, you make sure you have both your clips in place correctly. So, let's see here. 
some padding on that clip, okay? So, the orientation is gonna be like this. Just like that, and then we'll slide this bad boy in there. Make sure it slides all the way in. Okay. Make sure it's nice and in line, make sure that's on. We'll definitely make sure to clean the rotor again before putting the wheel on. Yeah, we'll slide this one right in the back. in a little bit I think we got it there we go fits right again should be very snug they should both fit you know like all the way back into their little seats there and then these when you come over the top you're gonna kind of line them up with that but nothing too crazy let me go ahead and undo this so this is why you have to push in the piston so much because if it's extended it's not gonna fit over both of these pads especially because they're new so they're thick how I like them. And you're just gonna go right over the top. And that fits pretty good. So, well actually, not really gonna push this back. Here we go. So you're looking to line up this top hole with this, where you're gonna put your 13 millimeter bolt. And then this bottom, where you're gonna put your 13 millimeter bolt as well, right there. You know, everything's put back together. Just gonna clean her off with a little bit of brake cleaner. This stuff eats away any of those fingerprints and all of that. Just be careful not to get it on your paint. But you could, I mean, you could go crazy with it, you know, it's not gonna hurt anything over here. Just be careful with the paint, like I said. Do not forget to close your reservoir for your brake fluid and throw the tire back on. And you're good to go, basically. If y'all wanna be with me while well, I put this on, that's cool. If not, enjoy your day. Have a blessed one. Perfect. All right. Quickly grab these and clean up my work area and all of that. And whenever you do go ahead and get in your car, don't like slam on the brakes immediately. Just kind of push, make sure everything's working good. Make sure everything seats properly. Um, you know, don't go racing directly after you change your brakes. <laughs> Make sure everything works all good. Make sure you definitely torque down your wheels to 100 foot pounds as well after you do do this. I like to hand start them like this so we don't strip anything. Always worry about that. you're still here watching me doing this, we are about to hit a thousand subscribers. So if you don't mind, you know, you could be one of the first 1000 people to hit that red button for me. That'd be great. Doesn't cost anything. I don't make anything making these videos, you know, just doing it for fun. I got to do this kind of stuff anyway. So I figured I'd record it and, you know, have some people join me. We do have some pretty big changes coming to the channel involving this car and most likely um like involving this car but not involving this car if, if you know what i'm saying if you don't know what i'm saying subscribe and stick around because this might not be sticking around if you know what i mean sadly not sadly but all for a good reason I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on the torque wrench, tighten those up all up to about 100 foot pounds and you know, mush the brakes a little bit, get them broken in and 
Might have a little review video on these soon if y'all are interested, but everything should be working great. Y'all have a great night or a great day. Y'all have a blessed one. Peace.